Hi, everybody. Welcome to Championship Saturday, Oregon style. I'm Bob Akami, and this is Rob Floss. And we've been thinking about this matchup probably since late October because Kyle Singler, Kevin Love, two of the most heralded juniors of the country, have brought their teams along for a fun night. When Kyle began his junior year, there were high expectations. He had a good team around him, and it was clear that he was becoming one of the elite players in the country. As that built, so did the legend of Kevin Love at Lake Oswego. So the word was, it was definitely going to be two years of huge rivalry between Kyle and Kevin. By now, both with Kevin and Kyle, everybody knows about them, everybody's aware of their abilities, and everybody's looking forward to the chance that they would compete against one another. So the numbers for Kevin Love, you know, it's been uh, pretty pedestrian, just 17 and a half points, but he's been all over the boards, had 20 rebounds in a big semifinal victory over Jeff. But the big man in all respects is Kyle Singler, of course. Great athletic family history, and this young man has cranked it up, averaging 23 points in the quarterfinal of the semifinal games. So here it came time for the state tournament and again there was even that much more interest. it's finally Kyle against Kevin the teams are ready the fans are ready we're ready let's play a championship game so there is as much excitement around this game as there has been for an Oregon high school basketball game probably in 30 years the very best team always will play the best in the biggest games. South Medford High School has, had never been to a state tournament game. And South Medford High School really had some real, very good basketball teams, uh, good players, uh, winning tradition. I think the coach there, Dennis Murphy, had really done a great job building that program up. He's a native of Bend, but he's made his mark in Southern Oregon, first at St. Mary's Private School in Medford, and for the past 18 years, head coach at South Medford. And he's really made it his mission to make Medford a basketball town. And uh, But never, they went to state, but never really went as far as uh, when Kyle junior year? Well, coming in as a freshman into high school, he was on the varsity team and um, he started as a freshman on the varsity team and then he just progressed every year from there. Was kind of a role player maybe as a freshman. As a sophomore he was one of the guys and then of course junior and senior year he was the guy. Kyle picks up the loose ball. He goes the distance with a patented Singler slam. South wins 85 to 46. Singler scored 25 points. Hartoon 21. In my uh, junior year of basketball, I felt like I was a, a really good basketball player. I didn't necessarily consider myself you know, one of the best players in the state or even in the country. I thought I was just you know, average. The ball came down with some energy, and uh, yeah, I give him credit, but uh, we uh, played all four quarters and uh, played well as a team. Our junior year, again, we were extremely talented. Uh, interesting enough, you tell this to people and they're surprised. Here's Kyle's younger brother, EJ, who we now know is a very good player in his own right. He was our sixth guy off the bench because we had four other guys besides his brother that were better. So, I mean, we were very good. If we play our basketball game, think of how much they're thinking about they have to adjust to. The fact that we got better size, we've got better quickness, and we're more disciplined. Again, we have said all along, we're not surprised we're here. kind of a build up. It was a back and forth who was ranked number one all of that year. Lake Oswego came out ranked number one. They lost a game. The ranking went to us. We didn't end up losing for the rest of the year, so we went into the state tournament ranked one, and they were ranked number two. Let's go back to last night. A nip and tuck game with Jesuit in overtime. Last shot fell to South Medford. Everybody thought it would be Kyle Singler. But in a one-point game, anything can happen. The night before in the semifinal game again, South Medford had not led the entire night. It had either been tied or a one-point lead the whole night. 
Um, I just remember the game being a battle, we went back and forth, and I, f I just remember feeling we could never get ahead of this team. So the game gets down to the wire, and the ball gets turned over by Jesuit South Memphis. We got it with five seconds left. You're looking for Singler, and look who's open, Miles Daly. And it was Daly with the game winner. Jesuit, the defending champs eliminated. And Kyle Singler, the first guy to congratulate Miles Daly. And first lead of the game actually came when that ball went through the basket. So self, we finally make it to a state championship. Big is the word of the night at MacArthur Court. Big excitement, big crowd, and big noise. Not to mention the biggest stars in the OSA galaxy. Kyle Singler has led South Medford to their first championship game. Kevin Love of Lake Oswego, already a legend in his junior year, is back in the final, hoping for a different result. Number one, South Medford. Number two, Lake Oswego. It doesn't get much bigger than this. This is what I've been waiting for all year long. It's a fantastic matchup and it's been very well hyped and doesn't matter who's in the championship game, but this one with all the publicity makes it that much more special. Lake Oswego has finished second four times in basketball in their history. They're tired of being second. And for South Medford, it's a chance to win their first ever basketball title. Ellos in the Navy. Sops in the white. The tip controlled by South Medford. And here's the sophomore guard, Michael Hartoon. The game comes. Uh, it was a back and forth battle the whole night. Um, you know, leads of three or four. Amigos, the juniors who've been here three times for Lake Oswego, along with Love and Spada. And there's Kyle Singler, he's on the board. I remember the game being being close. Um, I remember coming into the game, I knew it was going to be a tough game. I knew Kevin was going to, you know, have a, have a big game. Singler forcing Love off the block, and he'll pay the price with a foul and a three-point play opportunity for Kevin Love. Ello leads by three and the ball. Taylor Marvin Love, love the finish. Brent Johnson was fronting Kevin Love right there. Very nice look by Taylor Marr. These kids have been playing together for three years. I knew that I was going to have to uh, perform well. I knew our whole team needed to perform well to beat Kevin's team. This is Singler. Nice two foot jump stop right there by Kyle Singler, making a nice play right before the third quarter. Now both Love and Singler have done their job. And I'll tell you what, I think both of these guys, they haven't worked too much that they're not prime for some heroics at the end. We both had very good teams, good supporting casts. Came down to the wire. We got a possession down two with less than a second left. Not much time for Medford to get a shot. Look for a possible lob. Kyle Singer being involved some way. He's got to touch the ball, don't you think, Bob? Well, that's one thing. In this situation, you've got so much size with South Medford. You've got some options on a lob play. Kyle Singler will be involved as maybe the fact, maybe you have him in ball. Yeah, the, the, with 0.6 seconds to go, however, uh, or it is six seconds, or it's point six. Point six. Point six. If he inbounds a ball, that's not enough time for him to get back and shoot it, is it? It's going to have to be a lob and tip. Yeah. EJ Singler, the little brother, will lob it in. Watch Kyle. He's being guarded by McLaughlin, left to the hoop. Cartoon. They're not second place anymore. Lake Oswego has their first championship in boys basketball. They got to the state championship game, played Kevin Love's Lake Oswego team, and ended up losing. It was very disappointing. Very disappointing. Uh, because we all felt we had a better team. We were in it, still had a chance to win it and didn't get it done. And um, I'm certain that, that that really rubbed us all the wrong way for a long time, matter of fact, a full year. 
both these teams have so many pieces back in place. Dare we start dreaming of a repeat appearance next March? I think what he decided after his junior year when they lost, that he wasn't going to let it happen again. I remember sitting down after the game and uh, thinking to myself I wanted to get back to that point and to actually win, to actually be the team um, smiling, to be happy, to you know, share that moment with our teammates. Well, 365 days approximately from now is what I'm sure they're thinking about, just like Lake Oswego was last year. And this experience that South Medford went through today could really pay some dividends next year. You know, with Kyle, one of the things that's clear if you watch him play is what a competitor he is. And he took that loss, and in a sense, for Kyle as a player, it was probably the best thing that could have happened to him. Because while the best part of the story would be if he'd have just won that night, you know, everyone would be excited. But the great part was he had another chance. There was still a chapter to be written the next year. So it really served more as a motivational tool than anything. So the two big players will be back. We'll see what the next year brings for them. Like us, we go as Oregon's 4A champ. Let's take you back to the FSN studios. Probably the biggest sports memory that I have of him early on, we were living in Salem then, and roller hockey was really big in Salem. And so he got into roller hockey, and we all became roller hockey fans. So then we left Salem and they didn't have roller hockey here in Medford. So he started getting into the more normal sports like basketball and you know baseball and football. I think for me, once he started hitting kind of fourth grade, fifth grade, he got the upper fifth grade, he got the opportunity to start playing basketball, you know, kind of in a competitive level, start playing football and he was playing up. And uh, I, I knew then that Kyle was going to be um, you know, an athlete. Uh, growing up playing football was probably, probably one of the best things uh, to happen to me. When I played, I played two years up. So I'm playing against guys that are bigger, stronger, you know, guys that can hit harder. So um, I grew up uh, learning to be tough, you know, learning to you know, take a hit, uh, learning to you know, get up when you know, you, you feel like, you know, you want to give up. Well, you could tell with Kyle's size from pretty early on that he was going to be able to compete with high school athletes. So people started to uh, give some attention to the fact that, hey, this young kid in Medford is probably going to be pretty good down the road. We just don't know how good. Now you're headed to Duke next year. Obviously, you know, you were in great contact with Coach Krzyzewski up until the point that you were signed. And you say you still talk to him every couple of weeks. What do you guys talk about? Um, we just talk about um, our season, their season. Um, kind of just talk about life, kind of in general. Um, Coach, uh, Coach K is just a great guy. He, um, anytime we talk, he, he, he teaches you in some, in, in some sort of way. So uh, he's just a very no a knowledgeable person. And it's just great to uh, be able to talk to a person like that. I was getting recruited by all the top schools in, in, in the country. I remember my first letter being from Kansas, and I was blown away. You know, I was a good basketball player. I, you know, I knew that I could, you know, play at the college level, but I didn't necessarily believe I could play at a Duke or anything, just because there's not a lot of people that have come from where I'm from to, to make it that far. Uh, next fall, I will be uh, attending a Duke University. Um, yeah, I mean, Kyle picked Duke 3,000 miles away. Uh, it, was, it was hard as parents, but he, um, I, he, it was definitely the right decision. Playing for Coach K is great. It's fun. You learn something new every day. He brings excitement to practice and the games and it's just a joy to play for him each and every day. Again, 
All the pressure that was here only amplified by the fact that, you know, he's going to Duke, which has a history of winning championships and was at that time in a little bit of an up and down cycle in terms of making it to championship games. Uh, there was a period of time where they went without a Final Four appearance for a little while and, and Kyle was kind of viewed as being part of a class that was expected to bring them back to that level of prominence. I mean, in your last two years, I mean, you've been through a couple of tough games in the tournament, you know, where you guys didn't go as far as you wanted to. Uh, what's different about this team this year, do you think? Well, I do remember when they lost in Boston. Um, that was probably the first time I really saw him show true emotion. It's probably even going to make me cry. <laughs> um, so, we lost to Villanova in Boston. We were up in our motel room and I just remember him knocking on the door and walking through the door and he just collapsed face first on the bed and just cried for like probably a half an hour. He just, it was the most emotional time I've ever seen him. And I think, again, that propelled him his junior year to when they got the national championship. Butler out of the Horizon League. Duke out of the ACC. Coming down to 4.42 to go. Bulldogs have it. Down three. The title game was played in Indianapolis. Uh, it was somewhat of a Cinderella story. Butler had made it to the championship game, so you had David versus Goliath. The basketball environment, unreal. You know, it's big time. And just to watch your son in that environment, I mean, it's just, you know, it's how proud is it, you know? It's just so awesome. I remember it being a really tough game that had, you know, really solid players. This is worthy of an NCAA championship. <laughs> yes, indeed. And really fitting for the, for the way this tournament has played out. No question about it. It's been a great dance. And now it's about which team is going to dance best over these next 450. Going down to that last, that last play, Brian Zubek was at the free throw line and two shots. <laughs> and he makes his first one and for some reason Brian looks over to the sideline and um, coach tells him to miss the shot. Butler has no timeouts. So they would hope that Zubek makes this. Not going to try. It's Hayward pulling it down, getting around Zubat. When he shot the ball, if you were there, that thing's going in. <laughs> that, that thing's going in. As he shot the ball, it looked good from where I was. And I think Kyle, who, who got picked and was kind of looking up, I, I think he was thinking the same thing. Zubat at midcourt launches the shot. Oh, and almost went in. Almost went in. And Duke is the king of the dance. As I'm riding them up the sideline, I get pit. So I, I probably have a different perspective than, than anyone on, you know, anyone in the whole stadium. So as he shot the ball, it looked good from where I was. It had, you know, great loft. It was, you know, soft and everything. And it, it looked like it had a chance to go in. And for that second, everything was silent. And, you know, the fun of watching Kyle just lay on that ground. And there's a great picture up at the Singler's house. He's laying on the ground as that confetti's falling and there's just not anything left that he can give. We were so happy and so thrilled. It didn't have the same buildup for me as high school. High school was kind of a, a must win for me. College was more, wasn't this great? We're in the Sweet 16, we're in the Elite Eight, we're in the Final Four, we're in the championship game, and then we win, and it was like, wow, you know? It just wasn't um, as a must win. Welcome to the pit, MacArthur Court in Eugene, Oregon. It is sold out tonight. The entire town of Medford, Oregon, the suburb of Lake Oswego, 
They're all here, along with the who's who of basketball in the state of Oregon. It's a rematch of last year's final, defending champion Lake Oswego, and the runner-up, the South Medford Panthers. We're going to do it again. The final again was us against Lake Oswego, Kyle against Kevin. That was the way the state was looking at it, at least. Well, Bob, this is absolutely a matchup that the entire country, quite frankly, wanted to see again. Love on his way to UCLA, Singler headed to Duke, and one more time, these two are gonna match it up to see who can get the state championship of Oregon. It was an eerie feeling just because we knew this was our last shot to, to win a state championship. Here we are in the pit. 9,000 plus in attendance. Towels on both ends. Whether it's a Panther towel or a Laker towel, you better have it if you're gonna sit in those student sections. There has never been a crowd like this for a state championship game in the history of the state. Let's show you how the Lake Oswego Lakers made it back to the state championship game. It was a year-long effort to get back into that championship game and to play them again, which we knew we probably would. This is going to be a great matchup. These teams know each other very well. There's no secrets. For me, I knew I, we were going to play each other in the championship game. I knew that there was no other scenario. It had to, it had to be that. Well, the first memories of Kyle go back a long way. I've known Kyle since the early 90s when they moved back here. And so at the time, I was actually a freshman coach here at the high school. Well, my, my relationship with Josh goes back um, probably, I mean, when I was real uh, little. Uh, Josh was a, a guy that uh, put on basketball camps for kids in the community. And he was one of the camps, he was probably the only camp uh, that was uh, available to kids at that time. So I would see them a lot, be around them a lot, and then as he continued in his basketball and he really got the passion that that was going to be the sport he pursued, you know, we spent quite a bit of time together. It wasn't until um, the summer of my junior year, going into my senior year, where we became real close friends and we, uh, I think I think I spent more time with him than anyone in my family. Before I ever started with him, I made it clear, you know, it, it was uh, going to be a challenge. He wasn't in this to just be a mediocre player, but his work ethic at that point in time is second to none that I've seen and worked with. And like I said, I mean, I've been fortunate to work with very good players and he had that elite mentality when it came to how hard he was willing to work. It was great to have someone like Josh because there really it wasn't someone in, in, in the community that had time to spend hours in the gym rebounding you know, my shots, uh, set, uh, setting up drills for me, helping me you know, stretch, uh, just get better as a basketball player. And he did it out of the kindness of his heart. Singler and Kevin Love represent drive and excellence. Tonight, they lead their teams into MacArthur Court for the ultimate showdown, a repeat of the 2006 state championship. Lake Oswego, South Medford, next on FSN. So uh, we you know, get to the championship game. It's us against Lake Oswego, Kyle Singler against Kevin Love. The year before, they beat us. So there's really not a better setup that you could have than you know, this setup. It's a north-south matchup. Lake Oswego representing the suburbs from Portland. Metford, it's football country in Southern Oregon. They come head to head, playing for the title. Having been part also of a Pac-10 championship game that was one of the Pac-10 championship team that was in that building, this was a better environment than that building had ever held. So um, I was nervous. You know, you could feel it. We we were nervous, but at the same time, we were very confident. Let's show you how the Lake Oswego Lakers made it back to the state championship game here at MacArthur Court. Kevin had had to carry a bigger load for Lake Oswego. He did not have as good a supporting cast. Kyle had a real strong cast around him. His younger brother had become a good player. We had a couple outside shooters that could really play, and we had a point guard that wound up going to Washington State. Let's meet the South Bedford Panthers. Pretty good supporting cast around Kyle Singler. You see another Singler, that's little brother EJ, but they got a point guard that really make things go. Michael Hartoon, just a junior, he's gonna be a D1 recruit next year. 
the coach of South Medford. He's a true son of Oregon. Grew up in Bend. 35 years in coaching, 19 with South Medford. I know when we lost it his junior year, and again, having done this for a long time, and as talented as we were, I, I thought to myself, if, if we can't win it with this group, we'll never win it. This is going to be a great matchup. These teams know each other very well. There's no secrets. So let's toss it up and see what happens. So we had a better supporting cast, but at that point, Kevin was so dominant that we knew it was going to be that type of a game. There's Kyle Singler coming out on the floor. The Panthers in their home gray, trimmed in blue and white. Lake Oswego in the Navy, white and blue. And there they are, standing in for the jump. They will spend most of the night guarding one another straight up. Kevin Love, Kyle Singler, our referee from Corvallis is Bill Draper. And the 6A championship is underway. The game again, it was a back and forth battle. Uh, Kevin and Kyle went at it. Love against Singler, and Singler with the block for the foul. There it is. And not bad from three as well. Here's Allen, making like Kevin Love. And look at Love, power rebound, and a put back. The thing about that game that I remember was it wasn't our best game. Singler. That's a long two. Heartbreak. There's Singler still moving. Uh oh. Lord. And bunted. Kevin Lovett got his fourth foul. So he will sit down with 2.13 to go in the third quarter. Write this down. It's 36 31. Uh, Kevin Love can make you play not as good. You know, and, and he's just a dominant force. He had a great game. Uh, Kyle was in foul trouble. He was kind of in and out of the game a little bit. What's unique about that situation is all the work that I put in throughout the whole year. You know, it came down to the last, last five minutes. And now Singler comes back in. He's been out of the game four minutes, 56 seconds. Singler, seven of eight, eight of nine. The Panthers, 351 away from a championship, but it ain't over. In the end, it comes down to just, it was a back and forth, back and forth. We go to the foul line late in the game. 20 seconds left, they must foul Singler. They'll send Babcock Frank. Singler clears it. Kyle Singler in the backcourt showed a lot of poise and a lot of composure. And then when he was able to clear the pressure, looked up the floor, found an open teammate. So as we've talked about over the last couple of minutes of this game, free throw shooting was going to be critical. And Delenbach Paulette has a chance to go to, to the line to expand this lead to four with 12 and a half seconds left. I mean, I get goosebumps thinking about it because you feel like the entire, you know, state of Oregon is in this building. Hey partner, I don't want to scare you, but the floor is bouncing up and down right now. I, I feel it. And if he hits these, they're not going to have a chance to score enough points. We're going to have a four-point lead. Makes one more, and it becomes very difficult for Lake Oswego. They got Kevin Love at midcourt. They look for a quick basket. Spada. Finds Love, perimeter, lean in three, no. Ball's tamped out the midcourt, and the state championship is going south. You know, we kind of rebounded their shot. Guy, John Grimes, dribbled the ball out, and you know, that was the game. I mean, fans rushed the floor. The place just went nuts. And I mean, there's so many great photos and video of that point because it just was a moment in, in Oregon history and then, of course, in Kyle's life and history of coming back, winning that game after the disappointment of a year before and just, you know, feeling like, you know, the world was, the weight of the world was off of his shoulders for a minute, and especially the weight of Medford was off of his shoulders for a minute. The other thing was Dennis Murphy had never won a state championship at, at, at South Medford. This was his moment, you know, this was his moment. And this was the player's moment to win one. And this is really the community's. If we had lost his senior year to Lake Oswego again, I think we all would have just been devastated. 
but it was it was a year-long effort to get back into that championship game and to play them again with and to uh, to beat them this time it was a special moment um, like I said like I just wanted to have that experience with my brother. I wanted to have that experience with my friends and I wanted to have that experience with Josh and our coach and my family. So, And we did it. And it's something that we still talk about today. And it's really special.